Welcome to Proven Improbable, where we focus on metals, mining, and more. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Our featured company is establishing itself to become one of the world's leading graphite producers. I'm speaking of DNI Metals, trading on the CSE symbol DNI and on the OTC symbol DMNKF. Joining us for a conversation is the executive chairman of DNI Metals, Mr. Dan Weir. Thank you for joining us today, sir. Thank you, Maurice. Before we begin, allow me to convey to our listeners that DNI Metals is a sponsor of Proven and Probable and that we are proud shareholders of DNI Metals for the virtues we will convey in today's message. Dan, for the first time listener, what is graphite and where is it used? I think what I'm going to do to start Maurice, um, and, and, and just so everybody knows, Maurice has been to Madagascar and has been to our graphite property, so he's been able to see graphite right in the ground. Uh, what I was sort of want to do, I, I think what we want to do today, Maurice, is start out with, again, first time listeners, let's talk a little bit about the uses of graphite. I have a, uh, a great slide that I can bring up here uh, that we can have a look at. Maurice, I think this diagram gives us a good example um, or good picture of, of what we use graphite for in the world because I know that's very confusing for most people. Everybody hears us talk about the lithium ion batteries, uh, but graphite has many, many uses. And luckily for DNI, we've already started selling graphite uh, that is used in some of these industries. So I put a red circle around um, refractories and metallurgy. Uh, refractories uh, talks about the steel making industry. You can make steel one of two ways. You can use coal and and burn coal and and heat up a very large crucible, which are crucible really is just one of these big pots. Uh, you line it with graphite because graphite has a very high melting temperature. The other way to produce steel is using uh, electricity, and they use electrodes. The electrodes, they manufacture them out of uh, graphite. Again, because it can handle the high heat, number one. Number two, it's also very, very conductive. So again, you can use electricity to melt the iron ore and create steel. So 50% of the world's graphite currently goes into the refractory or steel making industry. But you can see here, there's lots of other things it gets used uh, for, you know, in, in the paint industry. Uh, lubricants is another huge area that graphite is used for. Uh, Maurice, as I mentioned, we I used to be a, a race mountain bikes and it used to be great to put on my chain um, because it doesn't like water. It's it's what they call hydrophobic. So it makes it a, a, an excellent lubricant as well. Um, it's also used somewhat in, in solar, uh, semiconductor coatings, paints. Uh, graphite foils is a huge area and a, and a growing area out here as well. I'm going to circle that one uh, because I want everybody to focus on that. And then obviously the lithium ion battery and the fuel cells. So the battery industry currently accounts for about 20% of the, of the uses for graphite. But what's really amazing is is that that area is growing. Uh, graphite use around the world is growing at about 6% a year. That's according to the uh, USGS. Um, and um, what we see in the battery industry or what data that we have seen in that, that the batteries are going to go from 20% to approximately 40% over the next five to 10 years um, of, of graphite use. Um, again, that's mostly in the lithium ion battery space. Lithium ion batteries, and I like to use this analogy. If you look at a salad, okay, when you sprinkle salt on your salad, that is basically the lithium. The lettuce itself is actually the graphite. The biggest input into a battery besides the plastic case or the steel case is actually graphite in it. So it, it's a very important part of the lithium ion batteries 
and the growth that we're seeing around the world. I mean, look what's happened, in Maurice, in the last couple of weeks around the world. Volvo announced that in the next number of years that they will not make any more combustible engines in any of their vehicles. They will all go to electric type vehicles. You're seeing um, England has said uh, that by, I think it's by 2025, don't quote me on that, uh, that they plan to stop the sales of any combustible engines in the country. France looks like they're going to follow suit as well. So it is coming. It's coming very, very quickly. More and more people are looking at electric cars. In fact, I'll bet you any of the listeners out there, the next car you go to buy, when you go into the dealership, I'm sure you're going to ask the sales guy, well, can I have a look at some of the electric cars? I'm really interested in this. Where, you know, two years ago or five years ago, nobody would have asked any of those questions whatsoever. So, DNI is focusing on some of the graphite foil area, which is what you use large flake graphite for. And the battery industry, again, was some of the growth. But our focus is not the lithium ion batteries. I make that very, very clear. We plan to supply to all these different industries um, because we will produce all sorts of different grades and sizes of graphite. Dan, thank you for that clarification. Now, for someone new to the space, can you also describe why flake size is so important? Flake size is important in the graphite industry uh, for a number of different reasons. Just, I'm going to take one step back. When you produce graphite at a mine, you will produce all sorts of different sizes of the, uh, of the graphite. In fact, if you look up here at the top, you will see that, um, and I'm going to circle some of them, these flakes that I just circled in red at the top here, they're almost the size of a dime, just to kind of give you some perspective of how big they are. You can get flakes that big. Uh, in fact, in Madagascar, where our property is, uh, it's some of the largest flakes that you will find anywhere in the world. In fact, it's very rare to find them the size of a dime, and I have seen them uh, on our property. When you process the graphite, you're never going to be able to maintain that size. It will be broken up into different sizes throughout there. So you will be able to get some of these 20 mesh sizes or 840 micron sizes uh, uh, when you produce it, but you will never be able to maintain all those great big large flakes. Now, why, as you just asked, why is it important for these large flakes? Graphite is sold one of two ways. It's sold by the flake size. It's also sold by the purity of it um, when you're selling it. Normally, graphite is sold around the world at around a 95% carbon content. So let, let's just say that all of these samples that I have up here on my screen are all at a 95% carbon content, okay? The, the large flake up here, uh, this uh, 840 microns or 20 mesh, um, would so, could sell as high as $2,000 a ton. If you go way down to some of the finer graphite, way down here at the bottom, like minus 140 or minus uh, 105 microns, this material, if it was 95%, might only sell for our um, you know, $600, $700 a ton. So as you produce the graphite at your mine, you're going to produce all sorts of different sizes. The key is, is the, the, the more, or sorry, the, the, the larger the flake or the greater distribution of large flake that you have in your deposit, the higher prices you're going to get for your material. And from a lot of the samples that we have done on our property so far, we're getting somewhere between 60 to 70% large flake. Large flake is above 70 mesh. Some people will say above 80 mesh, which is right around the 200 micron size. And then you start getting into the jumbo and super jumbo materials as you go up, okay? Again, from, from 70 mesh up is all considered large flake we tend to have somewhere between 60 and 70 percent of our material on our site tends to be the larger flake. So it's very, very strategic and advantageous to us to have this larger flake. In fact, 40 percent of the samples that we tested tended to be 50 mesh. Now, 
we are currently drilling and we'll do all sorts of other sampling. We may not have that exact number throughout the whole deposit. We will see as we complete our um, PEA, uh, which should be uh, done here before the end of the year. Thank you for sharing that information, Dan. Now that we have some perspective, let's delve into some of the press releases because there's been three exciting press releases recently here by DNI Metals. Let's first discuss the metallurgical test that we've uh, received here. What's exciting about the metallurgical test, and we did metallurgical tests on our property in 2015. We were excited at that point in time. Uh, we have, and that was done at a lab here in Canada. Um, another lab in Australia called IMO did some further uh, metallurgical tests uh, uh, over the last month. And we released that in the last two weeks. What's exciting about this, and I know when you look at this chart and everything else, you're looking at this and saying, okay, I don't understand what the heck is going on here. Number one, you can see the little pictures with some of the flake sizes. Again, those are massive flakes uh, that we are, are getting here. Um, the most important part of all this is, is that um, when they did the tests in the lab, they did their flotation tests, what was happening was is we were getting some very high purity numbers out of here, up to 98.3%, and that was simply just doing uh, flotation. There wasn't any secondary grinding or anything else. Um, that was um, uh, just getting the uh, testing done on that. So just, just you can look at all this, you can go back and look at our press release, but what, we, uh, what I'm telling you here is, is that these were some very high numbers. Now, what can you share with us about the first three drill results? So what we did, uh, and, and we mentioned this in the last interview that we talked about, and we showed a map, and I'll go back to the map here in a minute. We put some drill results out from the property, uh, from both the southwest zone, where we had drilled uh, a number of holes. We put out some uh, mineral results from, from the first six holes there. And remember, the southwest zone, we, we, we knew that we thought there was some graphite there, but it was never the main focus of this property. There's a main zone. So what's really exciting is the three holes from the, the main zone. You can go back and look at our press release. Uh, the drill results from the southwest zone were, were good. Um, I'm going to get into later uh, why we think it will be very impressive in the future and why it's so exciting about the southwest zone. But let's let's just focus on these three drill holes in the main zone. As you can see here, um, what we have found that the saprolite tends to be anywhere from 17 to 40 meters uh, deep. What I'm referring to in the saprolite, saprolite is just a fancy word for saying weathered rock. You can see in this picture, this is our geologist, Stephen Gertz. He's basically standing along um, a cut. So when we were putting some of the roads in with the bulldozers, uh, they push some dirt out of the way and you get that cut. That's not solid rock that you would find in North America. That's basically a sandy clay material that you can basically just pull off that wall. What's exciting about that picture that he's standing in front of is, is that's just a big seam of graphite, which is extremely exciting. These drill results are not from that spot. Um, if you drilled in that spot, they would be very, very huge numbers because that is a, is a very, very high grade zone that you have there. Put it in perspective, that's probably 28, 30% graphite when you look at that. So if we look at our initial results though, we're extremely ecstatic about these. So first three holes all hit beautiful graphite. Um, uh, the hole number 19 had 19.5 meters of 6% graphite, which included uh, four and a half meters of over 10% uh, graphite. GC means graphitic carbon. Um, uh, when you look at a property like ours, you have to distinguish between the graphitic carbon and the total carbon. Total carbon would take into account the leaves and the brush and, and, and all sorts of other uh, uh, carbon-based materials, but we only want to look at just the graphitic carbon from this. Again, put it in perspective. Around the world, when you're producing in saprolite or this weathered material, you tend to have grades of around four or five percent that they produce from. 
The hard rock can be uh, much higher. In fact, some of the Canadian deposits can have grades up to 12, 14 percent um, in their overall project. What we believe what we'll have in our project will be somewhere around the four to five percent. I'll be very ecstatic if our grades are around that four or five percent. That would make it absolutely fantastic. The difference is, is that when you're in the hard rock, your costs are so much uh, more expensive or so much higher um, compared to the saprolite that even a lower grade in the saprolite, my cost can be significantly lower than what you will have in a hard rock deposit. And that's comparing a grade of four or 5% even to a hard rock uh, grade that's gonna be 10 to 12%. Uh, percent. I know it's confusing for people to look at graphite and they try and scratch their heads because everybody understands that if somebody was drilling a gold deposit and you came up with 15 grams over 20 meters, you'd be jumping up and down and be very excited. What I'm trying to tell you is, is that these three holes, I am extremely excited about them. Uh, they show that, that we have some very, very high grade material. The other important thing, as I was mentioning, that the saprolite tends to be 17 to 40 meters deep. What we are finding is the average depth is about 28 meters. That's about 90 feet, anywhere from 90 to 100 feet of graphite. What that means is, is that we can be digging and digging for years, um, you know, uh, many, many, many years, probably in uh, uh, long before we're both dead, Maurice, and you're still just digging in the saprolite before you even have to worry about the hard rock. We stop drilling when we hit the hard rock because at this point in time, we honestly don't care about what's down in the hard rock. We're focusing on the uh, saprolite. It's why we have gone to Madagascar. It's why in a hot climate with lots of rain, um, and it's not in, it, it has to be in very specific areas where we are, um, the wind comes in off the east coast uh, onto Madagascar, and there's a ridge um, about 50 kilometers in from the ocean that rises 1400 meters above sea level and as the warm moist air rises it drops all the water here so over thousands of years mother nature has ground up or weathered the rock for us it's very easy for us just to go in with a shovel or an excavator and produce graphite dan equally important we have a press release with a letter of intent for a second graphite property talk to us about it Yes, our first property was very exciting. We had some, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we had some amazing drill results on that. Um, because of that, we have decided to buy the property next door. Uh, the property next door has had three drill holes done on it uh, and had a lot of trenching done on it, probably over 600 meters of trenching uh, that was done in 2016. Um, it was showing uh, in the drill results, you know, you were getting eight, nine uh, percent uh, graphite over some decent meterage uh, as well um, on that. So that led us to believe that there's beautiful graphite next door. Um, and we have decided to purchase that again on some of the results from the, the main property. What you're looking at here is basically a map um, let's start with the, there's a map of Madagascar. Um, over here, and I'm going to circle this uh, area in red, is where we're focused on. It, it, what I just previously mentioned about the weathering effect of the graphite. You can see that down along here, there's a ridge along Madagascar. Just to kind of put it in perspective, Madagascar is about 1,500 kilometers long and about 500 kilometers wide. It's one, I think it's in the top six Oh, it may be the sixth largest island in the world. Um, and what's very exciting about is being in this area over in here, again, the mother nature, the winds come off the ocean here, hits this ridge and drops it all into this area, okay? To the south of us, um, over here, there's a company called Sherit. Sherit has partners, Sherit is a Canadian company, uh, very large, they have nickel laterite deposits. A laterite, again, is a fancy word for saying weathered material. 
They produce nickel and cobalt from here. They spent over $8 billion building that plant in the last number of years. Their partners are Sumitomo, which is a very large Japanese company, and Karez. Karez is the mining, the national mining company of Korea. So they spent $8 billion between the mine, they built this slurry pipeline that runs up here, up to the port, which is up here. They build a processing plant here, and they bring material in and out of here, out of the port. What's great for us is, is that you have this national highway, which is this yellow line. From here to our property is about 50 kilometers, okay? That is a paved highway. That's what makes it extremely exciting for us uh, on, our, on our first property and our second property. And you can see the National Highway goes right through our property. I'm gonna move over here just to this uh, little uh, diagram over here. Our main zone that I mentioned uh, that we started drilling on the first property, and the first property is this L-shaped uh, property here, okay? Uh, it's called the Voigt Serra uh, property. Uh, the main zone is here. We know this runs for about three kilometers. Um, this is the highway that runs right through here. Our second property is this square shaped property here called Marifuti. It has multiple zones that run north and south through them, which we believe extend two to three kilometers as, uh, as well. Uh, we'll know further um, uh, as we do continue to do more work on this property. But you can see here now, Deanna has, has a beautiful land package. The first property was over 63 square kilometers. When you add in the new property, we have over 100 square kilometers uh, in this area. Again, only 50 kilometers to a port. The first property is permitted. We can put that into production whenever we like. The second property also has the same permits. We just have to transfer it from the current owners over to our, uh, over to our name. We don't expect that that will take longer than uh, a few months when we get that all over to, to our name. Also importantly, I just want to point out in this area of Madagascar, again, this is where you get the weathering of the material, that you have an operating graphite mine to the south of us, you have an operating graphite mine up in this area, and you have all sorts of alluvial miners all through here. There was some historical mining over in this area as well, but you can see through this whole area, they've been producing graphite through here for over 100 years, and Madagascar is known for its very, very large flake graphite. And Dan, allow me to interject here. Are we confirming here that these will be 100% owned by DNI Metals? So the new property is 100% owned by DNI. The first property, a company named Cougar Metals, is earning into our property. They are doing all the drilling uh, and they are doing a resource study and a PEA to earn into that property. Um, that will be done uh, throughout the fall uh, here and, and completed. All right. Now, Dan, we've covered a lot of ground and all of it has current <laughs> and new shareholders quite delighted. Allow me to ask you this here. What worries you the most about the next six months? The next six months. So here is our vision. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you our vision for the next six months. Over the next six months, uh, we are going to finish pur purchasing the first property, or sorry, the second property here, uh, Marifuti. The first property will continue drilling on it um, and, and working forward. In fact, we're bringing a second rig onto the property. Um, uh, it's a diamond core rig. The first rig that is working on there is what you call an air core rig. Um, what we are finding with the air core is that it is um, working away and it's bringing the material up to the surface um, using high compressed air, high pressure uh, air in, in order to do that. What we are finding though is it's breaking up some of the flakes uh, when it does that. What we're going to do is bring a diamond core rig in here so that we can get some proper numbers on the uh, on the flake size distribution. As I mentioned earlier, the larger the flake, the uh, more valuable the property is and the more, the higher the price you get uh, in selling every ton of, of the material. So, 
Another rig is coming in here. As I mentioned, we will be completing a resource study and a PEA on the first property. DNI has also decided to build a pilot plant, which we hope to have up and operational within about the next three to four months. Our goal is to build that pilot plant, that it will have a nameplate on it, that if it ran at full production, that it could produce somewhere around five to 6,000 tons. Actually, let's say four to 6,000 tons of uh, a year of graphite uh, concentrate. Um, so that's very exciting for us to get that going. That Our budget for that is a million dollars. So you can see here that it's, 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 it's relatively inexpensive to get that going. Um, we're very excited about that. I will caution though that we're are going to use that as a pilot plant to begin with because um, we'll do all sorts of different testing. We'll try uh, different reagents in there. We'll be trying different mass balances as we're doing that. So it, it'll, it'll take some time. The other great thing about it is we'll make it portable. It will be in five containers. We can start doing work on the, on the main zone. We can start do some work on the secondary zone and we'll be able to move it over to the new property that we have and we'll be able to test some of the material over there. The components of that pilot plant will have flotation cells that we could use when we build a permanent plant. In a perfect world, I would like to be in the new year, so in the first quarter or the first half of 2018, I'd like to be raising the money and starting to build the full-on plant. That will be very exciting to do that. Um, we know that we can move very, very quickly uh, to production. Again, we're permitted, and that makes it very, very exciting for us to do that. I will also mention uh, that our team uh, has built three graphite processing plants, and one of our directors, who's a mining engineer, operated a um, graphite mine. So we have the expertise to not only build pilot plants to build the full on the uh, uh, plant, uh, production plant, but also to operate these things, which again, uh, makes us quite a bit different than most other players in the world. Now, Maurice, to answer your question about what makes me nervous uh, over, uh, let's look over the next six months, so let's say to the to the end of the year or, or, or into the next year, um, yeah, you can't, can get delays in any type of project. Um, that, uh, that is always worrisome uh, from a CEO that you make your timelines uh, and that everything goes smoothly. Um, obviously, the resource report will be out there. Um, it's always concerning for a CEO what exactly that resource report is going to say, how many tons you're gonna have, what the grade is, and, and everything else. We're fairly confident that there's lots of graphite there. We've already proven this with quite a few holes that we've already drilled. Um, and, just, and just put it in perspective, um, we already have drilled uh, 30 to 40 holes on the property already. Um, so that's very exciting to see um, all the different holes that have been drilled here already. And, and how many holes that we will going forward, but it's always a concern. You always worry about those sort of things um, to make sure that that is 100%. Um, and um, I think that's really about it. You know, we're doing everything we can to make this all move forward. Um, to make a graphite project successful, you have got to be a low cost producer. We believe because of the saprolite and because of the distance to a port um, that we can be very low cost. You have got to have the the actual have the graphite and have some decent grades there. We believe, and again, I always have to be very careful when I say those things, we believe that we have the grades and the graphite there from all the drilling that we have done so far. Again, I will caution you, we do still have lots of work to do before the resource report comes out and before the PEA is completed. But it's very, those things really start to make a project. Then the last piece, the last piece is actually getting off take and actually being able to sell the material. DNI having a, a wholesale business has helped us do that. We are currently importing graphite from Brazil into North America. 
Uh, we will continue that. We plan to continue growing that business. Um, that helps us in getting into the market, helps us also get people know and understand uh, who we are. Um, you know, when there's simple things like, you know, you have to get um, a, a, a customs clearance in order to be able to import things in the United States. We've done all that. We know how to ship the material in the containers. We know the costs of shipping the containers. We know how to do all that. And that's been great for us to be, to be able to do that. And we will continue that. What we see where I believe a lot of the material here from Madagascar, and remember, there is currently graphite shipped from Madagascar to the to North America. I know some of the companies that are buying it over there and they say it's great high quality material. Um, and that's been going on for 100 years, just to make that very clear. But I think our big markets that we will be selling to will be places like India and Korea. And I think um, for all the listeners and everything else out here, stay tuned because we're working very hard at making sure that we get offtake and, and everything else. Uh, so I think that's that will be a fantastic uh, piece of the puzzle that uh, we hope will come soon. Now, Dan, you've covered a lot of information here today. Just to summarize here on the good points here, in the next six months, what do you foresee as a catalyst? Catalyst for the stock, because I know that's what everybody is, is interested in. Um, I hope to have some offtake agreements um, uh, in place. Uh, we, we will continue with this. You'll see resource studies. You'll see PEAs. You're going to see a lot of press releases out about more drill results and how that's all working. Um, you will also see um, us talk about the pilot plant and how we're doing the pilot plant and how that's all going. So that's going to be very, very exciting news as well. Um, so I'm really looking forward. It's going to be extremely exciting over the next six months and into 2018. Um, and I think when people really start to realize that, hey, these guys are actually producing, that they have permits, that they're close to a port, wow, it's going to be very exciting. And I think the market really is going to wake up to our story and get very excited about that. And Dan, if investors want to get more information about d Metals, Please share the contact information. Yes, um, and th what I showed you today um, is, is a new presentation that we put together. If you'd like uh, a, to see our presentation, please send me an email and I will send it to you. My email address is danweir at DNI Metals. That's D A N W E I R at DNI Metals.com. Or you can give me a call. I, I'll even give everybody my cell phone number. It's 416-720-0754. That's 416-720-0754. You can reach me anytime. In fact, Maurice and I are doing this on a Saturday night at 7.30 at night. So you can reach me anytime. Um, and I'm, I'm always open to uh, calls from, uh, from anybody. And also, before we close, just want to share with our listeners, uh, next week, Dan, you and I will be back in Madagascar, so looking forward to seeing you there. Yes, um, we're taking a group of investors uh, next week uh, to the to the project. Uh, that will be the 11th through the 20th of August. Um, we're also, anybody who would like to go to Madagascar, um, we are also uh, inviting people to go in September. Um, it will be the first or second week of September. If you have any interest in going on that trip, uh, please uh, shoot me an email as well, please. And last but not least, please visit our website, www.provenandprobable.com, where we interview the most respected names in the natural resource space. You may reach us at contact at provenandprobable.com. Dan Weir of d and Metals, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, 
completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.